Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, firing up Red Dead Redemption 2 this morning and I was greeted with this updating icon. About 5 gigs later, we were back in the game. Performance hasn't improved since I last tested the game with my i5 and GTX 1070. It's still running at around 69-70 frames per second on average, with console equivalent settings at 1080p. What we do have now, however, is the addition of an NVIDIA Reflex low latency option, which is very welcome, but on a more widely beneficial note, we also have an added FSR 2.0 setting. This is, of course, AMD's upscaling tech, the new and improved version. Enabling the quality preset of your choice, be it balanced, quality, performance, etc., will mean that supported games will be rendered at a lower internal resolution and then upscale to your monitor's native output. The quality of the image and the performance improvements will depend on the aforementioned preset that you choose from within certain games graphical menus, and that's no different here. FSR 2.0 does a much better job than 1.0 and visually it actually looks crisper than native when quality mode is enabled in Red Dead, and the sharpness scale is left at default. This is perfect for aging performance cards like the GTX 1070 here that can still offer over 60 FPS on average, but do dip below this in busier areas. Quality FSR means that the FPS metrics are improved across the board, and considering that this GPU doesn't support DLSS, it's great to finally have FSR 2.0 included by default. There was a community patch released a couple of months ago which did a fantastic job, but it's always nice when the developers themselves add something officially that people have wanted for a while, and can use without any additional tweaking. I'd say that for the GTX 1070, the quality FSR mode is absolutely fine, and it means we don't have to tweak the other graphical settings to get a boost in performance. We can leave things as they are. FSR 2.0 is also very handy for those lower-end modern graphics cards too, like the AMD RX 6400. This isn't exactly an easily recommendable graphics card, but it does alright especially in a PCIe 4.0 system. In pairing with the 12400F, we do get a steady enough frame rate even in Valentine here. We're seeing close to 60 FPS on average, though as with the 1070, the busier parts of town will cause some dips below this, more so with this card, of course. To alleviate this card's problems in Red Dead, we could drop a couple of graphical settings, or we could utilise the newly implemented FSR option, and this time we'll do just that with the balanced setting. This is noticeably not as crisp as quality mode, but that's what the sharpness slider is for. I've actually left it at default once again, because turning it up will be very noticeable in the recorded footage, and it won't look quite right. I'm still pretty happy with how the game looks though, and this is far less of a sacrifice than, say, changing things to native 900p. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a few years old now, but still very much worth playing. I'm sure that just like me, many of you fire up this game just for the sake of exploring on horseback with no real intention or place to be. I still seem to discover something new on every playthrough. That's about it for this video then, Red Dead Redemption 2 now comes with FSR 2.0 support, great news for those of you with entry level or lower end systems who might be struggling to attain a desired frame rate while retaining solid visual clarity. If you've got a graphics card that sort of straddles the cusp of playable and unplayable like the 6400 here and its continuous battle for 60 FPS, then this new addition will certainly come in handy. But that's all there is for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know how FSR 2 improves things for you in this game. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.